The UWI and Sandals to collaborate on digital transformation and revolution strategy. Young people encouraged to make good choices about sex. Alcohol consumption remains a concern for officials of the National Council on Substance Abuse. And in sports, Hilda Skeen and West Terrace are champions of knapsack. Broadcasting from our studios in the Pine St. Michael, this is CBC News Night, starting now. Good evening, I'm Pearson Bowen. A memorandum of understanding between the UWI Global Campus and Sandals Corporate University will pave the way for the digital transformation and revolution strategy of both entities. Signing a two-year agreement today at the Sandals Resort, Senior Corporate Director of Sandals Corporate University, Dr. Luz Lungsworth, says it will create a framework for her organization and UWI to collaborate on digital and technology-related projects in five main areas areas. She outlined some of them. The UWI Global Campus will provide technical input and subject matter expertise to the Sandals Corporate University in its use of the Eon Reality platform. It will assist us with design, development and implementation of extended reality projects. And this shall also include technical assistance in the development of hospitality training content specifically relating to rooms, food and beverage, water sports, among others. Pro Vice Chancellor and Principal of Global Campus, Dr. Francis Severin, says with workforce training evolving, the areas of artificial intelligence and virtual reality play a major role for companies. By harmoniously weaving into the teaching, technological and applied research capacities of the university, in the field of extended reality, XR, and other emerging technologies, the UWI Global Campus aims to support the continuous improvement of Caribbean curricula, program delivery, and assessment in new learning realities. Making good choices about sex was the focus of an event held for children for more, more than a dozen schools today. It was organized by Dance for Life, which is on a mission to educate the nation's youth on better sexual choices. Trevor Thorpe reports. This is the latest effort by Dance for Life to get young people to make better choices about sex. It's a big event held under the theme, Small Act, Big Impact, at the Lloyd Erskine Sanford Center. As explained by Dance for Life founders Leila Raphael and Shakira Emtage, students from 18 secondary schools were treated to an educational expo with DJ sessions, live performances, youth groups, informative booths, and simulations all geared towards helping them to make wiser choices regarding sex. Ms. Raphael said they have found that teenagers are more comfortable interacting with them, particularly in health and family life education classes in schools. As outsiders, young people very often feel more comfortable asking us questions that they maybe wouldn't feel comfortable asking, um, you know, someone in their school, uh, especially because sometimes we have teachers that might teach a student math and they're pulled to teach HFLE and sexual and reproductive health and they're kind of saying, you know, we're not comfortable necessarily with this content, uh, children maybe are not so comfortable with us teaching it and so being outsiders allows it to kind of be a little bit anonymous um, and kids feel comfortable asking questions. We really try to keep our sessions really interactive, youth friendly, judgment free, just meeting young people where they are, recognizing that, um, you know, it's a whole person you're dealing with. Ms. Ravel says this then allowed them to take the lead in the HFLE class settings. So we work really closely with the guidance counsellors and principals. The guidance counsellors are really our, our biggest allies. Um, we work with the Health and Family Life Education Program and we run the program in those settings. So it allows us to um, take the responsibility or part of the responsibility of the sexual and reproductive health uh, aspect of the HFLE program. Ms. Raphael added that the data they have collected over the years indicated that their interventions have made a difference. For many years, we'll collect data uh, with 100% of our students measuring um, baseline and inline results, so before the intervention and post-intervention. And we see quite um, significant increases in knowledge uh, changes, attitudes, um, and behaviors, which is kind of 
what we hope for. Each student was given a passport to be stamped after interacting with each exhibition as proof they visited the booths. Some students from the Lodge School were happy to give their take on the event. It has been very enlightening, like the booths that we went to so far. Like we got like different, we got the stamps and everything, the shop we went, and they are very inspiring and they like tell you what you have to do. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a nice, it's a nice, it's, it's nice. It's, it's pretty cool that they are bringing out like teenagers from every school to like come together to learn about different stuff that, um, that we will go through on a daily basis. The group pledged to share the messages with all of their peers. Dance for Life is in its 15th year of operations. Trevor Thorpe, CBC News. Alcohol consumption remains a concern for officials at the National Council on Substance Abuse and the Deputy Manager Troy Wickham is urging parents to be more careful of the habits they glamorize in front of their children. We will advise parents obviously that they must understand that children model their behaviors on um, what they see they tend to do. Uh, it, it's one thing for us at the NCSA to go going to schools, going to community groups to avoid children that look, don't do drugs or try not to use, do drugs or use any substance. But then when they see their parents at home using these substances and appear to be functioning as normal, productive citizens, um, they say, well, um, the NCSA coming to these schools and saying one thing, but I can see my parents drinking, getting up the next day and going to work, um, operating and what, we, what they deem as normal functioning adults, but they are not. He was speaking at that Dance for Life big event at the Loyola Skin Center Center today, where they were one of the entities allowing the students to see firsthand the effects of drugs and alcohol through simulation. Mr. Wickham says the last research NCSA conducted in 2013 shows a high number of young people engage in substance abuse and are usually introduced to it by a relative at home at an early age. Just over 50% admitted at some stage in their life they use alcohol and we, we are using this opportunity to actually simulate um, some of the um, substance use um, feeling for the young person to discourage them um, from using or actually engaging or attempting to um, engage in substance use. Adolescents are being urged to rethink your drink in an effort to stem the spread of diabetes. Marketing Administrative Assistant of the Maria Holder Diabetes Center for the Caribbean, Hilary Ford, says it is easy for younger people to reach for a sugar-sweetened beverage, but they were on a mission to change that behavior. She says according to a 2015 Healthy Health of the Nation study, one in five adults is diabetic, but there are a lot of cases that went undiagnosed. They may not know it. There's a lot of undiagnosed cases and when persons are diagnosed, it's usually on the later stage that they can't do nothing, do anything to prevent it. So it is on the rise and of course Barbados is known as the amputee capital of the Caribbean, so that is in itself alarming. Ms. Ford says while there is a high number of cases in older people, with more cases copping up in younger people, there is no readily available statistics on diabetes affecting young people. There are a lot of cases in older persons where it has gone quite far and it has um, divested into multiple issues, for issues, wounds, all sorts of things. However, we do have quite a bit of cases in younger persons um, that I think that is really stemming from the diet. So the soft drinks, the fried food, I would say that is due to diet in younger persons. Ms. Ford says the center has only just started pushing the message of a holistic approach to health by younger people, but there has been a change in the older demographic within their clinic. We'll take a break here, but coming up, the chief education officer speaks about the future of the education system. Chief Education Officer Dr. Ramona Archer Bradshaw says project based learning, currently embraced in primary and secondary schools, represents the future of Barbados' education system. Project based learning is a teaching method in which students learn by actively engaging in real world and personally meaningful 
projects. The skills of some of those students were on show during the finals of the Future Forward Schools Innovation Challenge at Solidarity House as they presented homegrown solutions to problems impacting Barbados. The initiative focused on some of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Dr. Archer Bradshaw, in her address, says the education system must change to meet the new and dynamic demands of the 21st century. We remain grateful to the investment exercised by our partners in this initiative. To this end, we thank Export Barbados, who willingly and excitedly captured the vision for this idea and made it a reality through their commitment to sponsorship. This level of investment demonstrates their understanding of the role which education must play in securing a sustainable present and future for our country Barbados. It also signals their acknowledgement that it is indeed our youth who must lead the charge towards change and innovation. She hopes students will be exposed to advanced training to enable the further development of their ideas. This is indeed not the end, but the beginning of a new partnership between education and industry. To our student teams today, we say congratula congratulations on making it this far. And we know that regardless of the outcome, judges, you are all winners. We also know that our future, our future as a nation is secure and bright because of you, our youth. You have tremendous promise and potential. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Barbados is readying to join millions of other worshippers worldwide for its annual General Conference. Twice a year, during the first weekend of April and the first weekend of October, church leaders from around the world share messages or sermons focused on the living Christ and his gospel. Hear Him is not only the hashtag for this year's annual conference, but according to National Communications Director of the Bridgetown Mission, Catherine Daniel, it is a call for people to find out more about Jesus. Ms. Daniel was a guest on Morning Barbados. And basically that's what we're all trying to do. We invite everyone to come and hear messages of hope and peace and eternal life. All of this made possible through Jesus Christ and especially in a world that seems um, more upset by war. All sorts of issues are happening. There's bad things happening literally around the world. So here's an opportunity to put all that aside and focus on something better. President Russell M. Nelson, prophet and leader of the nearly 18 million member church, will preside over the 194th Annual General Conference of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints set for this weekend. Sports Night is brought to you by Power In, Pause is Power, and by Dasani. Live first, Dasani after. Time for us now to turn our attention to sport and the man with all the news on all the action is Mark Seal. Mark, good evening. Very good evening, Pierce, and I can hear the excitement in yes. your voice. I know. <laughs> Hilda Skeen and West Terrace are crowned girls and boys champions of the 2024 Chaffet Frosties Knapsack Championship at the Usain Bolt Sports Complex today. Hilda Skeen took the girls' title with a whopping 183 points. 19 ahead of Christchurch girls on 164, with Good Shepherd finishing third on 77. Now for highlights, here's a look at the under 7s, 50 meters, and the under 9s, 80 meter dashes. And they've got a good start already. We can see in lane number seven there, that's LT Gear going well. In lane number six, let's see how they shape up. Who's going to win this one? Lane number six to take it. There you go, Nathalia Grazette, boys of LT Gear. And they're underway. We don't have time to call all of them. You see some of the athletes out of crisscross a little bit. Looks like lane number five or four in the middle gets home. That's Jace Gittins of Hilda Skeen Primary. 
Let's see what will happen here the second time of asking. Set. And they're away cleanly on the second time of asking. Let's go down the track and look at Bushay of Hilda Skeen. Hilda Skeen hit the front here right, right now. It's Tajir Bushay of Hilda Skeen. She's going to win this one in the under nine. Girls, 80 crosses the line now. Tajir Bushay of Hilda Skeen through the form. And we're, we're cleanly, Leslie, see how they shape up here. We've got Liam Howard Nels of Charles F. Brown, 12.01 coming in. He looks sharp as his head is up and going. Blackman and Gollop going well to Genesis Smith. Thank you. Now, a protest at the end of the meet had left the boys' champions up in the air, but officials managed to rectify it, and West Terrace were announced as boys' champs. West Terrace won with 89, three more than Charles F. Broom on 86, while Bailey's were third with 83. Now, one event that was won by West Terrace was the boys' under-11 400-meter relay. And we've got a good start here for the under 11 boys 4 by 100 meter relay event. St. Giles, Arthur Smith, Bay Primary, Charles F. Broom, West Terrace, Shirley Chisholm, Wicked Kumabach, and Eden Lodge. The first standover is complete. Shirley Chisholm have the baton up the back stretch. West Terrace is tracking there. Wilkie Kumabach in close proximity, and the rest will have to play catch up. That is the top four as we go to the second handover. Shirley Chisholm, can they make it clean? They do have the baton. Eden Lodge will have to fight to the nail here, but Shirley Chisholm, they hold the advantage. They came in with a 59.02. The final handover coming your way next. West Terrace have the baton. Shirley Chisholm with that in two. Alongside them is Charles F. Broom. We've got three dynamite athletes coming at you the hard way. It's West Terrace Tigers, and they're gonna roar to victory. It will be a roaring performance for West Terrace Tigers. And from the younger divisions, we have highlights in the 100 meters in the under 13 and under 11 categories. And there we are cleanly, very even after the first 20 meters or so. Shirley Chisholm looking good. That's Janelle Harvey. Harvey going well next to her. Hilda Skeen. Jada Scott. What can Scott do? But it's Shirley Chisholm and Janelle Harvey who crosses the line comfortably to win it there. The under 13 girls, 100 meters, represented Shirley Chisholm. Primary eased away from the pack. And they're going away cleanly. A little bit of a stumble there from the Hilltop athlete. But let's look at the middle of the field. Going really well. Jassir Moore. Jassir Moore turns on the afterburners and says, disappear. Goodbye. Goodbye. See you. Jassir Moore. Comfortable for St. Mary's. Set. Good to go the third time of asking it up very cleanly. Let's watch this one. Lane number three looking sharp. That's Lesnaya good in. Kalia, Kalia Hart looking good. This is three coming up. That's a hard way. Hart, Carrington. Who's going to win it? Hart and Carrington on the line. And 11 boys, 100 is gone away. And look at Shirley Chisholm's. Nathan Phillips, he's gone to the injury room and starts a turnover. But watch the Nobles. Nick Juan Scantlebury. Scantlebury's got a power home. Scantlebury wins it, steps away from them. Comprehensively done. Now, Barbados ended the 2024 Crifta Swimming Championship in the Bahamas with 37 medals, 15 gold, 15 silver, and 7 bronze. That's fifth overall behind the hosts with 101. Now, for Barbados, Heidi Stout won the FINA High Point Award, while Jaya Simmons won the girls' 13 to 14 age group. One of the highlights for Barbados in the final session last night came through Michael Sobers in the boys' 11 to 12 200 meter backstroke. Sobers claimed gold with a time of two minutes 29.95 seconds he was 155 at the 150 this no, morning no no sobers needs to move but simmons is coming on strong come on sobers come on simmons won the 50 he won the 100 can he do it again in the 200 we have
The Barbados Crafter Athletics team arrived home last night. The 31 athletes, along with their coaches and support staff, were greeted at the Grantley Adams International Airport by family, friends, and clubmates after a modest performance. Barbados finished the 51st Crafter Track and Field Championships at the Karani James Stadium in Grenada with six medals, two silver, and four bronze. Head coach Ramon Armstrong says Barbadians ought not to be disappointed by the results. If Barbadians follow track and field and they actually have a knowledge and understanding of track and field, they will not be disappointed. These things don't just happen overnight. And if you've been following the sport and these performances, these children, again, as Anmar said, they went out and they performed well. They had a lot of personal best. And what more can you ask? I think it was a very interesting experience. We had a lot of new members, a lot of young members, some first timers. Um, you can see we had a lot of fourth place finishes and ninth place finishes. So, you know, lack of facilities and stuff really um, affected our performances. But you can say talent is there um, based on their performances. So, from there, we just come back, rebuild, and next year we get better and improve performances. Among the medal winners was Argon Straker, the silver medalist in the boys under 20, 200 meters. Because I had one improve from last year on PB and to prove all the credits from last year and this year wrong because Barbie is not good, sorry, but just to prove them wrong for last year for those in me and things. So, yeah. And you have qualified for the World Champ, the World on the 20 Championship. That probably is a greatest feeling for you. Mm -hmm. that's, my, that's my next main focus for the rest of the season to just keep healthy and to improve my times to go there and perform my best. Jaden Walcott impressed in the under-17 boys shot put, taking the silver medal. Happy to win silver for Barbados. I know it's been a lot of work, a lot of progression. There's still a lot to come for that series. So. How was the competition for you? It started off a bit rough. Um, I was able to send links, settle the nerves. I still able to perform and get silver for Barbados. Another sprinter, and Ian Nurse, captured bronze in the under-17 girls 100-meter final. I came back this year after not being able to medal last year and this was my main goal was to get a medal and a personal best. So being able to accomplish it, it feels really good. And then we had Tion Haynes who captured bronze in the under 20 boys long jump. The competition, it was good. The exposure I got because last year I missed out on my career but this year being able to compete and medal is a great achievement for me. So. I guess I can see that it was a good performance and it was a good exposure for me, so yeah. Next year's Crifter Games will be in Trinidad and Tobago. The Business Report is brought to you with the kind compliments of the National Insurance and Social Security Service. More than a contribution, it's your lifeline. In tonight's business report, a nod to our heritage. That's how marketing manager Valerie Hope described the name change and rebranding of the Barbados Workers Union Cooperative Credit Union. She tells the business report the journey to the new name Affinity Plus Credit Union started more than three years ago and drew on the strengths of members, non-members, focus groups and staff. The first part of our name, Affinity, it really means, it really evokes a sense of closeness and understanding, being drawn together in terms of shared, you know, shared values and shared interest. And it's also a nod to our heritage, um, you know, our links to the Barbados Workers Union in terms of, you know, community and togetherness. The marketing manager said the rebranding brings a distinct advantage to the credit union's landscape of Barbados. We wanted all our members and all prospective members to know that when you do business with us, when you engage with us as a credit union, you get an added advan advantage. Um, we are always going to be focused on ensuring that we deliver additional value to your experience um, and additional value to your lives. And so we put those together to deliver then Affinity Plus Credit Union Limited, where you are better with us. iMart Pharmacies has now opened a eighth location, this time in Wildy. The company has been operating for 15 years and has become a major player on the island in the sale of pharmaceuticals and other products. Sales and marketing manager Nicola Maynard says she's satisfied with the impact made by Armart over the years and there are plans to continue expansion in the future. Just know that we are making sure that we're going to expand our, our service to the customer, the public, and our 
stay tuned for more, for more events like this one. And, you know, thank you for being for supporting us over all the years. Back to some more sports now, a package full. Mark. Starting off with some cricket, good news. Barbados are the champions of the 2024 West Indies Rising Stars Under-15 Championship, which was played in Antigua. Playing in the fifth and final round at the Bushida Sports Ground today, the Young Bajans defeated Windward Islands Under-15s by 192 runs. Batting first, Barbados were bowled out for 297 in 49.2 overs. 82 coming from Jahidi Hines, 62 from Captain DeMarco Wiggins, and 58 from Justin Paris. Ursino Fontaine took 5 for 18. In reply, Javid World took 3 for 17 as the young winners fell for 105 in 26.2 overs. More good news. The Barbados Baby Gems have won their opening match of the Jean-Pierre Caribbean Youth Netball Championship being played in St. Lucia. Playing this afternoon against Dominica, the defending champions won the game 20-14. to Goal shoot Kiana Hart made 11 of 14, while goal attack Tashi... Tisha Trotman, that should be, had 9 of 15. The Bajan Baby Gems next take on St. Vincent and the Grenadines tomorrow at 6 p.m. And in basketball, good news depending on what side of the fence you're on. Number one seed Pinelands and number three Burger King Clapham Bulls have won their opening playoff matches as the co-operators General Insurance BABA Premier League semifinals began last night at the Wildy Gym. Pinelands defeated CAM Smart Assurance City United Celtics by just one point, while the Bulls needed overtime to get by Fusion Boutique Station Hill Cavaliers. With the scores locked 80 all after regulation time, we can fast forward to the overtime period where Bulls outscored the Cavs 13 to 7. Akeem Marsh getting the inside position on Devron Knight for the easy layup. Next possession after Bulls came up with the steal, this time it's Simeon Maynard with one of his four threes. He shot 44% from beyond the arc. At this point, the Cavs only added two more points to their tally, thanks to free throws by Knight, who had a team high 31. But Bulls were still piling it on. Marsh again with good post-up position on Knight. This time he seasoned it with an exclamation point. Marsh with a double-double of 18 points and 14 rebounds. Maynard has proven to be a difference maker and a game winner. And with his game high 35, the Bulls went on to beat the Cavs 93 to 87. In the other game, Pinelands went out to a 12 point lead early, 32 to 20. Rashid Maynard here with the three, 50% he shot from that range. But Celtics bounced back before the half, erasing that deficit and taking a 45 to 40 lead into the interval. Joel Hunt had 15 for Celtics, along with 17 boards. In the third quarter, Celtics increased that five-point advantage to 14, 64 to 50. Jared Allen here banking in a three. He led the Celtics with 16 points. They were in a good position to create the upset, but you should never doubt the heart of a champion. Here come Pylons, Maynard with the basket and the foul. He had a game high 24. Celtics though still holding on to a now reducing lead. Anand Joseph Thorne, three of his 12. Then Theo Greenwich. He also had 12 for Celtics, two on this pull-up jumper. Pine skipper Darren Hurley didn't have a big game, but this drive gave him two of his 13. And he was wondering if the and one shouldn't have been tagged on. Pine within single digits now, as Rashad Hall buries a three. He had 11. Darian Hurley hasn't shot the ball well the last two games, but he came on in the fourth quarter. This tough jumper helped him to 14 as the Pine took a one-point lead. One last chance for Celtics to get the win or send it into overtime. Thorne with the long pass to Allen, but it's broken up by Maynard as Pinelands held on for the one-point victory, 79-78. to 78. Game two in both series is tomorrow. Will the gym from 6.15 p.m. Now that's our time tonight. Thank you for spending it with us. I'm Pearson Bowen for the crew to all of you. Good night. By God's will, we'll see you tomorrow.